Okay guys, who wants to see some testing on a 5.7 liter aluminum, the original OG LS1? Yes, I know all the guys from Australia are begging to see the 5.7 liter LS1. This one's for you. We've got cylinder heads, camshafts, intakes, all on the original 5.7 liter LS1. Before we get to our data, I want you guys to check out a couple things I have up on the channel. First of all, I've got playlists for any different engine family. I've got lots of LS stuff, including NA and turbocharged stuff. And I have those broken down for small block Chevy, big block Chevy, Hemi, modular Ford, Honda. There's turbo stuff, blower stuff, nitro stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. So anything that you're looking for, including the other guys where I run the Buick and the Cadillac and the 4.3 liter small little LT1 stuff. So check all that stuff out. But I wanted to cover five different videos that I want you guys to take a look at because I thought that they were really cool and they deserve a second look. The first one is how to maximize power out of your six liter. So check out that video. I'm going to put a link up right here. If you want to know how to modify your six liter, how to get maximum power out of it, check out that video. Video number two is a comparison between a 5.3 liter LS and a 5.4 liter four valve modular four, both NA and boosted. So good stuff. So which one's better, the 5.3 or the 5.4? Check it out. That video is going to be right here. The third video I want you to take a look at is how to cure low oil pressure on my particular my particular vehicle, which was a 2002 Silverado. The oil pressure started getting low. So check out what happened and what I went through to try to cure the low oil pressure blues. That video is going to be right here. Number four, we're going to take a look at on my five liter Ford guys. Would you rather modify your five liter 302 or maybe swap something else into it like a 351? Hard choice, but that video is right here. And the final one, number five, is going to be my turbo test. It is a low buck, cheap turbo test run on a K24 A2 Honda motor. So I ran a variety of different turbos. You can check out all of that stuff right here. Now let's get to those results. To start off our salute to the 5.7 liter LS1, mostly for the guys down in Australia, because they're always complaining that I always run our junkyard LS motors that we call LS motors, which are the 4.8 and 5.3 stuff. We're going to take a look at the LS1, even though all of this stuff basically works kind of the same way, regardless of the displacement. I mean, you want a little bit smaller cam on the 4.8, and you go with a little bit bigger on the 6.0, and the 5.7 is kind of nestled in the middle there, along with the 5.3. But here's all the 5.7 stuff that you guys could possibly ask for. We're going to take a look at heads, cam, and intake changes on a 5.7 liter LS1 crate motor because that's actually the first LS motor that I ever ran. They both of them belonged to West Tech. They were crate motors supplied by GM and away we go. So we want to need to take a look at what our baseline is. We're going to take a look at a cylinder head upgrade on the LS1 crate motor, but it's not totally stock. So let's take a look and see what we did to our LS1 crate motor to prepare it for this test. Right now it was a 5.7 liter it was also equipped with a slightly healthy cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here, but it's a Comp XR265 HR camshaft. So it's a fairly mild cam, real good street cam. Even I would go so far as to call it maybe kind of a truck cam style. And as you can see from the lift and duration, it's fairly mild. It works really well. I ran, I ran that particular cam a ton on these uh, 5.7 testings way back in the day. This thing had this right now, I had the stock LS1 head, stock rockers. It had a fast uh, intake manifold and throttle body on it and we also had a set of 36 pound injectors because we knew that we were going to be making more power now we ran all this testing with inch and three quarter long tube headers running into at least collector extensions and it's also important to note that a lot of guys have commented about some of the tests that I've done about, oh, well, this one had mufflers and this one didn't have mufflers. At this power level, the mufflers make no difference. In fact, 
the muffler would make more of a difference as an extension to the length of the collector extension than it would to any sort of flow restriction. This is a three inch, a dual three inch exhaust with a motor that's making 475 horsepower. It's going to be a little over 500 with the, uh, with the other head upgrade. But even then, dual three inch exhaust at that power level, those mufflers, which are basically straight through Magnaflow mufflers, make no difference in power. So note that going in. So here's our test. We ran and dialed this thing with our fast XFI management system. This thing ran best at about 12, 9, and 29 to 30 degrees of total timing. As I said, we had our 36 pound injectors, and this combination worked out pretty well. It's a 5.7 liter and equipped with a stock head and that small cam, basically, and headers. We also run it with a Mazir electric water pump and no accessories. And obviously, we have an optimized tune, and we normally run it a little cooler too, which is why it may look like this thing is making more power than the rated power output. But in this condition, run the way that we run it, this thing made 480 horsepower right on the dot. Nice going at 6,200 RPM. Peak torque checked in at 453.1 foot pounds at 4,900 RPM. And here's what happened after we replaced the factory LS1 heads, which were a 241 head, replaced those with a set from RHS. Now, we have to go into this a little bit. <laughs> Let me show you what the power gains were before we start talking about the cylinder head. So as you can see, our cylinder head upgrade netted some pretty impressive power gains. Right off the bat, we had 528.5 horsepower. Peak torque was up as well, 487.7. So we can call that 488 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, we gained everywhere. Starting, We were starting our run at 3,000 RPM, and the gains were smaller there out to about 35 or 3,600. And then the gains started getting more significant, as you can see out at the top. The gains were pretty impressive, and I think out past 6,500 here, with the uh, bigger head, it kind of looked like we might have been getting into valve flow, even though that particular head did have a Beehive valve spring upgrade. I think that they were 2918s back in the day when we ran this. We ran this test long ago. But it's also important to note that these were RHS heads, but these are not the same as the RHS LS heads that you would get today. It looked to me, and I haven't been able to verify it, that this set of RHS heads, which Westex still has on their test motor, these look an awful lot like a set of mast heads. Now, I don't know if mast made these heads for RHS back in the day when they first started and decided that they were going to get into the LS head market. RHS has been a long-standing head company when the guys from the comp group uh, took them over, but they hadn't done any LS stuff. So maybe they were looking to get into the market um, and, and wanted to get something to fill that right away. These look like, uh, as I said, they look an awful lot like mastheads. They had the same kind of um, rocker stands, the same push lot rod length chains that we normally associate with those. They flow very well. They got, they made obviously very, very big power. So it leads me to believe that they might have been back then. They, these might have been uh, mastheads. But either way, they made uh, really big power changes. And also the other thing that I want you to note is when we did the cylinder head upgrade despite the fact that we kept the same mild cam and kept the same fast intake manifold and it wasn't even the 102 millimeter of the later stuff this was early on this was the smaller intake manifold but we could with the stock heads it made peak power at 6200 after we installed the bigger cylinder heads they made peak power out at 6500 rpm and honestly i think that the only thing stopping us from making even power uh, higher in the RPM range and this was two things. One, the long runner intake, the fast manifold, that didn't change. And also we had a pretty mild camshaft in it. So now that we've taken a look at what happened with our cylinder head upgrade, let's find out what happens with cam and intake. Now that we've shown you how much cylinder heads are worth on a 5.7 liter LS1, let's take a look at a simple cam swap because that's probably even more common than a head upgrade because most guys are going to put a camshaft in before they upgrade the cylinder heads because a factory stock LS, LS1 head is a pretty decent head to begin with. Here is our basically stock LS1 5.7 liter crate motor. It was um, stock head, stock cam, stock intake, throttle body. Actually, it had an LS6 intake because we upgraded the intake to the later LS6 style. It had the same hooker, long tube headers, inch and three quarter extensions with mufflers on it, 36 pound injectors. It was run with a fast. And so this is kind of would be more like a stock baseline and run in this manner. Our 5.7 liter produced 
414 horsepower at, at uh, 5,800 RPM and 418, 417.8 foot-pounds of torque at 4,700. So let's take a look and see what happened when we install the camshaft. And this is early on. There weren't a ton of cams available for them, but we uh, put a comp cam in there, and I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for you. This was uh, an XR275HR cam. As I said, we'll put the specs up there here so you can take a look at it. It was um, a fairly healthy camshaft, uh, but you can see the thing that's nice about it is not only does it pick up a ton of power, which we come, you know, we were used to doing when we run these camshafts on LS motors, but it picked up power everywhere, which we liked, all the way down to 3,200 RPM. So equipped with our camshaft, the power output jumped from 414 to 454.7 horsepower, and 400 and from 417 or 18 foot pounds up to 441. Let's see if we've got a little bit more here. Yeah, 441.5, so we'll call that 442. And as I said, it's nice that we picked up torque all the way down even the low, relatively low RPM ranges. This cam wasn't big enough that we were in a position where we would start trading with the stock cam. Um, we got similar gains from that, two, six, that smaller 265 cam. And in my opinion, this 275 cam way back in the day, there are much better choices now. Comp has a lot more, uh, a lot cooler, more efficient lobes now than they did. This was way back. So, but we can see it's not uncommon for a camshaft upgrade on an LS, even an LS1, a 5.7 liter, going from the stock one to something that's better to pick up 50, 60, 70 horsepower sometimes. Now the LS1 cam, it, normally we compare these to the 5.3 or the 4.8 cam, which is the mildest of all the factory offerings. And, and, and truth be told, the LS1 cam is gonna pick up pretty decent power compared to those mild truck cams. If you take a look at the video I have up with all of the factory LS cams, you can see that an LS1 cam is a fairly good power upgrade from those 5.3 and 4.8 camshafts. So we got even more power with the comp cam and that's normally what happens when we add camshaft to a 5.7 liter LS1. After illustrating the effects and the gains offered by heads and camshaft on a 5.7 liter LS1, it was time to do the final test and that's the intake manifold. And actually we did not start out with the factory LS1 intake, but it shows you what happens on this displacement. So let's take a look at our test motor. It was obviously a 5.7 liter, but this one actually had forged flat top pistons. It had the same RHS heads that we'd run previously. It had a much healthier camshaft though. It was a comp. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It was a 459 cam, 54-459-11, 617, 624, 231, 239, and 113 degree LSA. We started out with the stock truck intake manifold, which itself is already better than the factory LS1 intake. If you take a look at the other videos or the video that I have up where I ran all of the factory LS intake manifolds and, and a ton of, of the aftermarket ones as well, you'll see the factory truck manifold, this early truck one is, is better than the factory LS1. About every other intake manifold is better than the factory LS1. So it's always a big step up. But this shows what happened. I want to show what happened when we changed basically the effective operating range of the motor by changing the intake manifold. So we have our truck intake. We have a set of inch and seven eighths long tube headers. We have an LS1 oil pan. Again, this is a 5.7 liter. It's a modified one with good heads and good camshaft already in it. And the only thing missing really was an intake manifold. So run in this manner with a truck intake manifold. Our LS1 produced 512 horsepower and 453 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we installed, when we replaced the factory truck intake manifold with a much shorter runner Edelbrock ProFlow intake manifold. It kind of looks like a little tunnel ram with a front mount throttle body. So let's take a look and see. Here is our Edelbrock intake. And as you can see, it made a lot more power. It made a lot more peak power anyway. Peak power was all the way up to 550.6, so we can call that 551 horsepower. Peak torque was not changed a lot. It was 450.5, so we'll call it 451 foot-pounds. It just happened at a much higher engine speed. It happened all the way out at 5,800 RPM, where the peak torque with the factory truck intake occurred at 4,900 RPM. Now, as I said, we made quite a bit of peak power gains, and there were gains from about 5,700 on up, but 
And here's the important point is this always the trade off with a short runner intake, even though we see gains at the top of the RPM range. And if you're running to 7,500 or 8,000, then definitely this is the kind of intake for you. But if you're looking at from 3,000 to 7,000, there's a bigger picture to look at. So check out what happens below that, below 5,700 RPM, the longer runner truck intake manifold made more torque. Uh, by as much as here at 4,300, we're looking at 416 versus 437, so about 20 foot-pounds. If you take a look at this, would you trade the loss in torque up to 5,700 for the added power out at the top? And again, that's a question only you guys can answer. If you like the big power gains out at top, it's kind of hard to argue with 550 horsepower, especially if you're running from 5,500 to 7,500. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. But would you trade all that off? Let me know in the comments. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from our testing with the 5.7 liter LS1? Well, we learned the following thing. It responds to modifications the same way that a 4.8, a 5.3, and a 6.0 does. And one of the reasons for you guys, specifically in Australia, why we don't test a lot of 5.7 liter LS1 series, or that I don't, is because I don't see them in wrecking yards. I have yet to go to the wrecking yard and actually find an LS1. We never find them because they were only using a handful of like passenger cars or performance cars, the Corvette and the Camaro and the GTO. Whereas the other motors, the 4.8, the 5.3, and the 6.0, were used in millions and millions of trucks. So when I go to the wrecking yard, I see all kinds of trucks and SUVs and vans, and they all have these 4.8, 5.3, and 6.0 motors. So we snatch those up because they're readily available. The good thing, though, as we saw, the 5.7 responds to ported heads, it responds to camshafts, and it responds to intakes just the same as these other motors do. In fact, it responds basically between the 5.3 and the 6.0. It responds a little bit more than the 5.3 and a little bit less than the 6.0, which is good things for you. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I hit my camera, and I'll keep testing.